of our guests asked about how we create our power. So January, and I'm up here right now at the intake cleaning it out. So I thought I'd make a quick video showing how everything works. This is Iron Creek, which we've had a pretty warm January so far, so it's actually a lot more flow than normal, but this is Iron Creek. It drains the bowl behind the lodge, and uh, we're at about 350 feet elevation right now. And uh, this is our intake point, and I'll show you that end here in a little bit. But first of all, water basically comes in this culvert, it flows down through this culvert, and into the intake box. And I have the intake box open and the primary filter up right now, which is that to show you the uh, the fine filter, which is that basically hardware cloth wrapped around you know this bracket that we made and the, the hydro pipe is inside there so those small little rocks and twigs and so on can't go through the hydro pipe and plug anything up down at the lower end. So right now I'm just cleaning this out. There's a little bit of sediment that's accumulated in the bottom and uh, I'll put it back together here in a second. What I'll point out is the bottom of this this intake box is, is uh, at an angle, so like a V. And you can see the corners down at the bottom. It channels the sediment that gets through the, the primary filter. It channels that sediment sediment down into the very bottom, which is hard to see, but it's below the the, the fine filter. And come around here, it channels out this this valve here. So any of that sediment naturally settles to the bottom flows out the sediment. We still haven't fully submerged the intake at the other end of the culvert. We still have that same little small amount of water coming out that I was using to clean it. But you can see how the fine filter or the primary filter works. Just a bunch of holes built, drilled into this aluminum plate. Anything that's too big uh, stays on this side and I'll have to manually clean it out about once a month. And then any excess water flows out that hole right there along with any pine cones or anything else that floats. So here we are back at the intake box. You can see it's filled up, which means the pipe is full. And any extra water is flowing through the outlet, which you can see right there. Goes back into the creek. Here's the pipe. Goes down the hill. View from the outside. Oh, we're coming in. We've been using this for about five years now. Just really well. Pipe. There's Dakota down the mountain. A little bit of history. Uh, Mid 1920s through 1957, there was a salmon and herring processing cannery on our property, and this was the water intake that they used almost. I'd say almost exactly like ours, only theirs was made out of wood. And now the water they needed from the cannery also came from Iron Creek. So, you, you know, using their boilers and so on. Completely rotted away, you can see the old cannery water line, which, which was about 12 inches in diameter. It was all made out of wood and wrapped in that wire and tarred. And that round thing there in the middle is just a, a coupling where the two sections of pipe came together and now all the wires left. There's another section of pipe right here which is smaller and still largely intact. There's a lot of sections of this up and down the trail and uh, watch out Dakota. And this was four inch and then this rubber water line here was also here when we got here uh, here because of the cannery and uh, my family used it for a water line for a couple of years and then here's our hydro pipe that we're using now going down the mountain. Quick look at that old wooden pipe. See it's made up of a number of pieces that they wrapped together with with wire and then tarred. And that, that section there is in pretty good shape. Here we are coming back down towards the property. There's the pipe. And in the foreground you can see the hydro shed and to the right the gener generator shack and then a couple buildings down beyond that and the water and a Fognick Island in the background. Here you can see the pipe coming down and, and here's where it joins into the building. Basically it, behind this insulation there are a series of T's that end in this clean out here and there's a valve there in the background so I can turn the water off down here, blow out the pipe if I need to, 
And of course the insulation is designed to protect it from any cold weather we get this winter. Um, you can see more when I go inside. I have the water off right now so I can I can show you how all this works. But basically the pipe separates into six different hoses, three each neck down into each of these alternator boxes. There are three nozzles inside that are jetted down to a jet that size, which is about just over a quarter inch, just under three eighths, somewhere in there. And we can regulate the size of these jets based on how much water we have coming down the mountain. And those, uh, of course, hit that stainless steel impeller or runner, as they call it, which, we have a second alternator here, comes up through and simply spins this uh, 60 amp truck alternator that's been converted to 48 volt. And we can regulate that from this panel here, read how much power we're making and so on. Now when we turn the water on, those two alternators will do nothing but charge our bank of batteries. We have four big batteries. Um, inside each battery is a two volt cell linked together to make up one battery. And we have four, so that's 48 volts of power. And those are inverted to AC power, which we use at the lodge. And of course, every, everywhere else by these inverters. We also have three solar panels and a 12 kW diesel fire generator in that building there that are both largely backup. The majority of our power comes from the hydro plant, but the solar panels add a little bit, and if we need it, the generator will turn on. The, the hydro system, the computer that runs the hydro, will turn this generator on, and they will also help charge the batteries and, and so the batteries don't get too low. This is our diesel generator, just in case anybody was curious. All right, let's turn the water on. So there we go, water is back on, and we're making about 70 amps of power. And underneath those two alternator boxes where the water comes in and spins the wheels, that wastewater flows down into this trough, and obviously it's out, and makes its way down to the ocean.